At first this game was a little too much for me, I'm not that smart, a lot of things happening and time pressure overwhelmed me, but as the old meme says, improve, adapt, overcome, and that's what I did. So maybe I'm a little bit smart after all. Now, after a few hours spent on this title, I can respond to questions like what is Warcana about, why it's not for everybody, and whether it's going to be something huge. That's what she said! <laughs> Hello everybody, it's Mardax, the indie games addict. Well, all games addict. Where my mission is to show you cool and interesting indie titles and help developers reach more people. If in next few minutes I help you learn more about another game you may not know, don't forget to subscribe for more. As the developers described, the game Warcana is a fantasy-inspired base defense RTS game with a deck-building mechanic. It's a little bit complicated at first. On top of that, the game aims to deliver a multiplayer experience with a battle royale mode with 30 players compete against each other in real time using thousands of units swarming enemies in PvP and PvE. There is a PvP mode, and if you don't want to play with other players, you can simply choose the campaign and start one of the available scenarios. Scenarios aren't short and present various challenges. You won't always have to crush your enemies, sometimes you will need to fully fight specific tasks to achieve victory. If you want a simple yet, I hope, realistic explanation, think of StarCraft 2 with a Zergling Swarm, there are billions, and any deck builder title mixed together. This is Warcana for you. The game describes that you are a powerful magician and your goal is to survive being constantly attacked by thousands of units swarming your base while you send your huge army to finish off your enemies. You will need to build your best deck, understand what each faction focuses on and use strategic thinking. You also need to be quick enough to avoid wasting time as that is crucial. So we can assume that Warcana is about mages from different factions fighting each other in name of something. Whatever, never mind, you have to beat your enemies, that's it. But how you do it? I will mainly focus on the campaign for single player because in the demo there aren't many players online right now. Still, I believe the core mechanics of both modes are nearly the same. Overall, you have to choose your faction before starting a stage. On the right side you can check your current deck, in the upper section you can view all the cards in your deck and the power. Once you choose a faction and start the stage, time banging is ticking. Time in Warcana is very important and determines your fate. Typically, you are against two other computer players. Battles are divided into phases, specifically two phases. One is the preparation or building phase. During this phase, you mainly focus on building your base, upgrading its defenses, and preparing for the next phase. It's not that you can't build anything during the battle phase, because you obviously can, but the preparation phase restores your destroyed buildings, gives you resources, colored structure and mana, a new hand of cards to play with. By building buildings <laughs> and using some spell cards, you can get more cards which automatically land in the, the discarded pile to be drawn again in another preparation phase. Highly important thing is that you have only 30 seconds before next battle phase. Fortunately, in single player mode, you can choose to build something, the timer stops until you place the building or cancel the building action. I'm pretty sure that's not the case in PvP mode. To build armorias or other buildings, you need structure, which you get every time the battle phase ends and, and a new preparation phase starts. By building economic structures, you can choose a few options as a reward for building them, such as new cards. Often, if this building survives the battle phase, you will get X amount of additional structure. So if you plan to fortify your main base as tightly as possible, make some space for buildings that will give you more resources. Simply put, you have to plan your actions based on available cards as quickly as possible or start building something to lock the timer, giving you a little more time. You are welcome. The battle phase, on the other hand, has its own set of rules. Let's start from the beginning. Once the timer reaches zero, the battle phase starts, and all used cast spell cards for units, as well as, as unit summons from buildings, act simultaneously, rushing towards your enemy's wall to destroy them and all towers along the way. The goal is to push forward until they destroy the enemy's main base, bringing you victory. At the same time, your enemy's units will be doing the same. Stages or matches are divided into rounds or turns, and when the battle phase ends and another starts with the preparation phase begins. 
A key and every important factor in this mechanic is that in the preparation phase you will only have 30 seconds as I mentioned it earlier. However, battle phases last longer with each round until the match is finished. This requires you to build your defenses as best as possible and survive until the battle timer reaches zero. Obviously, the more time the battle phase has, the bigger the problem for you. But it's the same for your army. If the battle timer reaches zero and your units haven't completely defeated your enemy, everything resets and you have to try better next time. Enemies send far more units than you, as you often fight two versus one, so their armies are combined. By building walls you can block enemies and by placing towers you can destroy some of them. You can use spells that damage enemies or spells that heal your walls and buildings. There are plenty of things available and you can find your favorite playstyle. Besides all the simple yet quite significant mechanics, sending units to battle also has some rules, just like your enemies. Use walls and towers to prevent their units from reaching your main base. You obtain units by using spell cards, and some of these cards can already be in your deck depending on the faction you choose. You can also build proper buildings like barracks or factories, which rewards you with unit spell cards. At the bottom of the cards you can see their stats, <laughs> and based on the order in which you use the unit spell cards, they will storm the enemy base. It's good to send units with high wall damage first, as they will quickly bring down walls, allowing the rest of the units to rush towards the towers. You can even help your units. Offensive and defensive spells, which I mentioned earlier, can help your units as well. Besides that, you have a smite. Smite is a free spell with a 3 second cooldown that deals 100 damage to a small area. It's quite useful for attacking enemy walls and towers. The best part is that you are not restricted to a limited area. You can attack any enemy building, even the main base, right from the start. However, it's pointless since bases have a ton of health. Since it deals smart damage, but has a small cooldown, you can deal 1000 damage in 30 seconds. If an enemy has a problematic building for you, but you know it will take some time until your units reaches that place, start attacking it right from the start, helping your army. The game has a highly detailed pixel art, which I like very much. It's nearly like a clean image with a pixelated filter. The coolest thing, in my opinion, is how close you can zoom in and zoom out with your camera. You can see your entire floating map and the enemy's army as small pixels, but you can also zoom in very close and see stats and small details in the enemy's appearance. Of course, the same goes for your units and buildings. I think pixel art is less power consuming and with one or few sprites there is no difference in performance, but often in similar games with thousands of units there can be some performance issues. However, everything is smooth. Nearly on the map there is a thousands of units walking, attacking and finding the most optimal path, yet while playing the game there wasn't a single freeze or other technical issue. The only issue with the art style is the music. The game starts with no music and at first I thought that was intentional. There is some battle music in stages, but on the campaign map only sound effects play when choosing another scenario. But probably this is the problem that developers will gonna fix soon. Besides music errors, I think the tutorial didn't introduce me to the game well. I had many problems progressing to further stages and learned from my mistakes. Some units have stats in red and I thought that was something bad. So I was sending my units incorrectly. I wasn't sure what the red color meant and I thought that if you send a unit to the proper building with a red stat, they are weaker or something. The game should better explain these small details. Another thing is that I don't like the lack of upgrades. I thought that in the tech tree you can upgrade your cards or something, but unfortunately you can only see which cards you will get next in line after building whatever it is on the card. I love upgrading stuff and I always want to upgrade something, but on the other hand, if there were upgradable cards, PvP would probably be too unbalanced. Another confusing thing is PvP. Developers advertise the Battle Royale mode as the main mode where 30 players fight each other, and once one fails, another jumps in his place until one player remains. But in current state, the game won't start if there are no 30 players, so if the game will not gonna be popular, there will be a problem playing this mode, developers should give the option to play with a smaller group. Overall Warcana is a good game with a well set learning curve, it's not hard to learn the basics, as the main mechanic is quite simple, but to be very good at Warcana, you have to spend some time learning more about the game and memorizing your deck. Although I don't know if this game will be a huge or medium hit, 
It might be a problematic for some players because you have to think and act fast, planning things ahead. It's a dynamic or action RTS where you don't build your settlement and keep it alive. Here you have to survive and destroy enemies, because it's not cozy and family type of title. Like in StarCraft, every second matters, even if in single player mode there is a some room for mistakes, in PvP there will be none. Again, it's not an RTS for slow paced happy gaming, but rather a challenge for people with a strategic mind who can quickly perform good actions by watching what's happening on the battlefield. For some people, Warcana can be easy peasy, but for others, it will be exhausting after one or few matches, and for some, it will be unplayable. I still think it's a good game, and there is some interest around this title. You can check out the game for yourself. As always, there is a link in the description of this video. If you reach this part of the video, I can ask you to subscribe for more videos about indie games. Thank you very much and see you in next video. <laughs> Bye.